it's Jose. Thanks for joining me on my journey to I Am. For those who've been here before, thanks for coming back. And for those who are new, I was raised as a Jehovah Witness convert child from the time I was five until I was 19 when I <clears throat> left the faith myself. Um, my mom's still a full-time full Jehovah Witness. Um, she's the only one in our family except for some extended cousins. One cousin with three, three kids, and that's it. Um, but today I was want to talk about uh, a little bit more about what I was talking about the last time, um, the energy healing. So I want to talk about the chakra classes that I took. Uh, each there's seven chakras. Um, if you're familiar with that, essentially they're just energy void vortexes that run along your spine, uh, and they symbolize the colors of the rainbow. So I don't know if you know, but we have like pretty much we live in the rainbow kingdom like in the rainbow realm um, where we see everything that's between red and violet that's in our like that's our physical spectrum and so each one of those colors vibrates at a certain energy and I want to point out um, I've learned before that we have seven musical notes do re mi fa so la ti and then you repeat do but that's seven so you've got seven notes, you've got seven main colors, um, and they correspond to one another. Uh, I'll try to put in a little picture here of, of that. Um, so with the seven chakras, uh, the lowest one being your root chakra, it's at the base of your spine. It has to do with the stuff that was at the root of your life, like your family, the beginnings of your life and such. Then you have orange, which is your sacral chakra, and it's kind of halfway between your belly button and like your pubic area. Um, and it represents the relationships that you have with people in your life. Uh, then you've got your solar plex chakra. It's called solar plex for a reason. It's right at the solar plex. That's your personal power, it's yellow. Um, and you'll notice that colors actually affect your mood. Um, red can actually make your heart beat faster. Uh, blue and green can actually make you slow your heart rate down. Um, and yellow can actually increase your focus, your, your mental focus. Then the next one is your heart chakra. It is at the heart and it's green, uh, kind of like the earth. This is our, the heart of us is the earth. Um, then you've got your throat chakra, which is kind of like aqua colored, um, peacock kind of colored, and it governs your, th your truth. So if you're having problems in your throat area, it's likely that you're not living your truth. Um, then you've got your third eye chakra, which is your intuition and your connection with you know knowing and then you've got your crown chakra which connects you with the energy of the universe or God source whatever you want to call it um, so I took these classes and what the lady did was one one chakra at night but every night she would do a guided meditation and I'm, I'm a fairly visual person I could see pictures in my head um, I used to see pictures in my head I had a car accident three years ago um, and I hit my head pretty hard. I have some post-concussion stuff and I have difficulty making pictures in my head now, um, seeing my vision and such. So, um, so I'm just gonna tell you the couple of few that I remember. So I wanna say the first one that I remember was, um, we did this guided meditation where we went into outer space, like we pulled away first from the city that we were in you know, then from like the country, then from like the earth. And I went out into space and I came across the moon. And for that moment, when I was doing this meditation, I knew, I felt what it was like to be the moon. So old and so slow because the moon is so old and just 
nothing matters to it. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie, The Never Ending Story, and they come across the turtle, the turtle mountain, I don't know, close to the end somewhere, maybe halfway through the movie. And it reminded me of that. It was like, the, it was just, her, her energy was so slow because, you know, nothing was happening. <laughs> She's just sitting there for millions and millions and billions of years and doing nothing. Other than just shining light, you know, reflecting light essentially back to us in our hours of darkness. So that was the first one. The second one, one of the other uh, chakra type um, meetings that, that we had, um, she invited us to meet our spirit guide. And so we were doing a guided meditation and in my head, okay, came the vision of the caducees. I don't know if you know what the caducees is. It's um, the symbol for the medical symbol. I'll put a little picture here. But in my mind, when I saw that, I, I heard Aaron. I was like, oh, that's Aaron's staff. Like Moses' brother Aaron. Because, you know, the, co the, the copper staff that he had with the snake wrapped around. And he had that, that staff with the flowers. And so I was like, I was like, okay. Aaron, cool. Some years goes by and I go to a spirit medium and I've talked about this on one of my other videos about how I how I went to the spirit medium and she had asked me at one point, do you have any questions? Because I was a little bit skeptic at the beginning because she the way that that spirit medium worked was she would she told me that, you know, she could see my father's side of the family spirit, my mother's side, and other people. And I had never met my father. So at the beginning, I kind of thought she was a scammer. I was like, okay, here we go. I just wasted my money. But later, when I asked her, do you know, can you tell me what the name of my spirit guide is? So the way she works is she has her own spirit guide is, that's on over here to her. So she's looking over here, talking to her spirit guide. And she looks back at me and she says, it's Hebrew. His name is Aram. I was like, holy, maybe this girl does have something. Because no offense, I've never heard the name Aram before. How was my spirit guide supposed to relate to me the name of Aram? I think Aaron is pretty close and I think he did a good job of letting us know Aaron is his name. Like Aram, right? It's close enough. Another night, we were going to meet our spirit animal. So I'm walking up, I'm walking up this mountain in this guided meditation. I'm walking up this mountain and I look over to my left and there's a huge bear. And I'm like, I look into this bear's eyes and I have never loved an animal as much as I love this bear like in at, at this time I love this bear and I could feel the love that I have for this bear and so I'm like sorry I'm just barking <laughs> I don't want to hit a car <laughs> okay so I'm like I put my arm around this bear and we're walking up this hill and I get to the top of the hill and there's like a little hut, kind of like grass thatch roof, little mud hut. And there's like, it's like, it's like a bear top. There's nothing on the top of this mountain except for this little hut and some like there's dirt top. And then he had like some logs that were like, I don't know if it was L or like a C, but there was like <clears throat> some, like a fire pit in the middle. And I don't recall the, the fire pit being lit, but there was a fire pit and we were sitting at the fire pit. And like, this is ancient times. This man was wearing like a hood, but I couldn't see his face, but he had like horns, like almost like ram's horns. And I couldn't see his face, but he went into his hut and he got me some food and some water to drink so I was like drinking out of a bowl and like you know eating this food 
and I realized that he was actually feeding me knowledge like it was I was actually being given knowledge I, I wasn't actually food but it was time to go and I start to head back down the mountain and all of a sudden my bear disappears like I mean my bear's not beside me anymore and I'm like I'm in this guided meditation my eyes are closed I'm sitting at this table with a bunch of other people and I start I'm start I start crying like I'm talking like I got dreaming tears coming out like they're like falling off my face and I says like I'm sad I'm really really sad but then all of a sudden I realized that I didn't lose the bear I absorbed the bear so the bearer was going to be with me all the time. And that was a little bit like, that kind of like made me feel a little bit better. But man, that was like the worst thing that I ever felt. Like I was so sad. I was like, oh my God, I lost my bear. Cool fact. A bunch of years go by. So maybe like, I don't know, five, four or five years go by. Because I mean, this is a while back now that I've learned about the chakras. I was talking to one of my distant cousins, like my mom's cousin's kids. And she says, I got my Métis status. And she has like blonde hair. Like you wouldn't even, you know. And I'm like, oh yeah. So she gives me her like registration number. And I call up the same place where she got it. And the lady Lynn was like, yeah. You know, you're, and then she gives, she looks it up and she's like, yeah, this. And so I get registered and find out that I'm Métis. And then I get, um, she sends me some information about um, Catherine Anna Nontak, who's my ancestor that gives me the Métis blood, right? So her parents were Jeanne Autriandet and um, Nicholas Arendaki. So the lady sends us this lady Lynn sends me some, like a, like an article that somebody wrote about my, our, our ancestor. Um, and it says that I come from the Arendaki Huron bear clan. Right? I was like, holy moly. Like that's, that's my heritage. I'm, I'm of the bear clan. And I'm like getting tingles all over just thinking about it. And so I was like, okay, this is cool. You know, I'm reading about how the Arendakis were the shamans of the Hurons. Like if you, you know, they were the ones that you would go to if you were sick. They were shamans, they were healers, they were medicine men, and they were also like, um, yeah, they were healers. So it goes on to say that my ancestor was married. The first time she got married, she married my ancestor, Jean Durand. John Durand. Jean Durand. And so he ended up like dying of some kind of like epidemic that came through. Like, I'm not sure if it was like smallpox or, but it was like, you know, one of these fevers came through and he died. So she remarried. And her second husband he ended up dying too of like another one of these things that came through and then she remarried for a third time and didn't have kids but the second marriage that she had those kids from that marriage they moved to Louisiana and became the Cajuns of Louisiana so that's actually the person who wrote this article was actually from Louisiana and was explaining about how her grandfather had opened up like this trunk and had a map of Quebec and had like a turtle uh, turtle shell belt made out of beads, like a turtle shell bead belt um, that belonged to Jeanne Autriandet, Catherine's mom. And they had Nicholas Arendaki's war hammer. Because see what happened was in the 1600s, there was something called the Beaver Wars. And the Beaver Wars was because they didn't have cash back then. They didn't have paper money. So what they had was beaver pelts, and that was the currency of the time. So down south, the England was was England. The English people from England were trading with the natives from down south, and the France was tr had gone to Quebec and was trading with the people from like northern Ontario and Quebec. But the France, the French people, would only trade with the natives if they converted to Catholicism 
Whereas the English would trade, they've just traded. So the Southern Indians had all these weapons and came up and, you know, I mean, we had wooden war hammers. I mean, so N Nicholas Arendaki, my ancestor, actually died in that war fighting, you know, for his rights because he did convert over to Catholicism um, and died. So, so that's how that happened, the, the, the beaver wars, right? So he died during that battle. So my ancestor, Catherine's mom, actually ran to Quebec City with Catherine on her back at like two years old, like carrying her and running. And then she died a couple years later when, like three years later when Catherine, I think was about five, um, of another one of these, you know, fevers that came through. And so Catherine was actually raised in a nunnery, like by the nuns. And, um, and that's how she got to get the chance to marry John Durand because John Durand was actually already, um, set to marry one of the king's daughters and the king's daughters are a whole other thing um not, they're not actually king's daughters but it had to do with i want to say orphans that from over there and they were trying to get them homes and marry them off so they yeah so that's how that happened and the bear clan and i'm bear clan and so my spirit animal is the bear i thought that was pretty cool and i thought i'd share it with you today uh, does anybody else have any cool stories like where they were doing some guided meditation and was given some information that somehow ended up later being proved to be true? Um, I mean, I can't say these things are true, but they are, sure are coincidental. And for me, I, I like, I need that. I like, for me, synchronicity is how the universe speaks to me. It's how source speaks to me, how God speaks to me by telling me things over and over and for me to take note because I might not notice the first time I'm told something. I might, you know, maybe the third time, second time, fourth time, fifth time, 20th time. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for joining me, joining me on my journey to I am today. Uh, I hope you have a great day. I hope you learned something new as always. And I love you because I love me. Take care.